Hello, podcast world. Welcome to my channel. It is 4-9-2021 at 6.49 a.m. And I watched last night um, Law and Order Organized Crimes. Now, it's got your Elliot Stabler from Law and Order SVU. I don't know if you remember him. He was Detective Benson, Olivia Benson's partner, and they've got him back on his own show. And I love watching a show from the pilot or from birth, you know. And I love watching it grow from birth to infancy to, you know, uh, around about the fifth season is when a show really gets transformed into what it's really going to be. And I really enjoy this show right now. It's, it's Law & Order has already um, had some hits with uh, Law & Order and then Law & Order SVU and then Law & Order Criminal Intent and, you know, now we have Law & Order Organized Crime Unit. And <laughs> you, you just, you can't go wrong with Law & Order. Like, the, the concepts or whatever, it's written by... Dick Wolf, and he has some other shows or whatever that he writes, but a Dick Wolf show, you can't go wrong with it because, hey, if you're into television, daytime television drama or whatever, interested into the three goals that you'll seek on the show, you're going to get that. If you're one of those people that can really relate to what's going on, then cool. Now, in this, in this episode... Um, of, of Law and Order Chrono I mean Crimes uh, Organized Crimes <laughs> Right So uh, in this episode Detective Stabler He's trying He's still mourning from the death of his wife He's um, trying to figure out Who killed her And uh, The main mob boss Has died By the hands of his own son so, things are really bad right now. Things are real risque. So, you just never know what's going to happen next uh, when it comes down to it. So, just keep in mind that he's angry, you know? He's he's just, like, so emotional. And then, he's talking to uh, Olivia, and she's telling him, like, you, you okay? You know? She's trying, she's concerned about her former partner and she just wants to know that he's okay because she can tell because she's experienced it herself that he has an episode of PTSD that's post-traumatic stress disorder and um, <clears throat> for those who <clears throat> for those who have uh, experienced PTSD or who have it you know because it's, it's something that really just kind of flares up you never know when you're going to have an episode or when something's going to push your button to where you spaz out and just can't control or remember you know they have tv shows about this yes they have um snapped or the wives just usually it's the wives it could be any anyone but I love when it's the wife that snapped at the husband. She sees red, and next thing you know, she's a killer. And she's just, you know, killing and killing and killing. But that's not really how PTSD works. PTSD is just like a, you know, something in, in an episode. It's a, it's a manic episode to where some sort of trauma has taken place in your life. Maybe if you're in the military, you've gone to war. And you just can't control yourself more or less emotionally. And the things that you say are probably some of the most hurtful things you can say. Or the things you do are probably some of the most hurtful things you could do or whatever. Including physical altercations like fighting or killing or, you know, whatever. It's just, you know, and then you don't realize that it's happening because, like I said, it's just reaction. And that's all you're doing is reacting to the build-up of the stress that's gone that's on your mind, you know? It's um, it's poor mental health at the end of the day. And if you're 
and if, you know, so to anyone out there who's in, 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 in mental health is important, like, our depression is real, you know, I just, all the time I say that, it's something that you definitely want to <clears throat> check on and keep in touch with because you never know what's going to happen next with your, with your mental health. And if you're experiencing any type of signs of poor mental health, talk to someone, you know, talk to someone and that usually helps find some sort of hobby, figure it out. Like, I mean, the talking to someone thing is usually uh, good. And even if they don't give feedback, just talking, just knowing that someone else is there and, you know, cares, you know, that, that usually is a great you know, starting point at the end of the day when it comes down to it. So definitely find some way, an outlet, like video games or whatever, cooking or cleaning. Cleaning is a good cleanse for your soul. Now, back to the show. Um, everything that I've seen so far certainly let me know that it's definitely going to be a great show. So definitely tune in to Law & Order Crime... Or criminal organized organized crimes, uh, and check it out. It's definitely action packed. It's definitely a bunch of uh, twists and thrillers in it. If you're if it's your type of show, it's something you definitely be in. If you're already a fan of the Dick Wolf shows, Law and Order, and Chicago Med Fire PD, you know, I, I can't, the list goes on and on. But like I say. If, if it's something that you're into, then you'll definitely check it out. And the thing that I've noticed is um, Law & Order, they don't go to court as much. So there's more the law side than the order side. So um, like I guess people got mad uh, more so when it seemed like they would go to court and they, you know... If they're guilty, they're going to get convicted, you know. You got, if the law does their side correctly, then the order side, uh, you know, open and shut case. They're, they're pretty much not going to do anything, get up there. And it's, it's, I rarely see them fumble the ball if they have an open and shut case. Unless something sneaky is going on or underhanded or whatever. Also, it's rare for them to get out of trouble if they get into trouble and it's not them, you know? You pretty much, if you go to court, <laughs> and this is pretty much what they talk about on the show, you're gonna get jammed up. You're going to get locked up. You're going to do time. If they got close enough evidence to decide your fate, then you're going to jail. You're going to prison for whatever amount of time. That's why most of them, mostly they take the plea deals and that's just like um, like real life because you don't really hear about a lot of trials going to court trying to fight the case. They take the plea deal. they like, um, you can either go to prison for 99 years to life uh, or, you know, we'll give you 10 to 15 years and, or give you 5 years or something. And they'll be like, you'll only do half of that time, you know. It'll be out of 3 or something. That's why people take plea deals, you know. I, uh, you can handle going to prison and end up being on parole, you know, getting a chance to see freedom. But that's what's going to happen with the plea deal. If you go to court, you are going to max you out. They're going to be like, what is the maximum? They're not going to be like, what's the minimum? Because they already tried to give you the minimum. Now you can make them um, to take the court and they start thinking about the word resources and time and all that and effort. And they're going to be like, give him the max. You know, life, you know, whatever. And that's why a lot of criminals, you know, take the plea deal. They, they willing to be like, oh, okay, we understand. We're not gonna do this. We're gonna give you like a few years. Then that's what they're gonna take. Sorry, not sorry. But thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate your time. Don't forget, world peace. Hello, YouTube world. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to like, comment subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I drop hot content like this and stay tuned for the next video.